Hello everyone. Good evening. Uh, this is Dr. Aditya Mishra. I am assistant. I am an assistant professor at IIM Ranchi as well as co-chair of Patel Bihari Vajpayee Center for Leadership Policy and Governance. And uh, today we are going to uh, organize the webinar on social entrepreneurship. The theme of this webinar, uh, this webinar will be local for local. We are quite fortunate to have Mr. Virendra Kumar, who is founder of Matigar. Please welcome to Mr. Virendra Kumar. And then we have Alka Singh representing Avika Online, and she is working there as marketing head. So let's first talk about uh, Mr. Virendra Kumar. Mr. Virendra Kumar is a graduate in industrial engineering and management from National Institute of Technology, Kurukshetra. He has also obtained a diploma in entrepreneurship and business management from Entrepreneurship Development Institute of India, Ahmedabad. A young industrial engineer from NIT, Kurukshetra, uh, who has founded this Matighar in his home state, Jharkhand. He has been working tirelessly for the last two years and has invested all of his savings and his personal money to this cause. He has managed to register his initiative, Matighar, as a non-profit. He ran hobby classes and taught in school to be able to generate funds to help the artisans. His commitment is unparalleled in the left in, uh, in that he left his well-paying job of a business analyst in an MNC to take up this cause. Matighar is a socially responsible organization working for preservation and promotion of traditional paintings like Soharai, Khowar, Petkar and Jadu Patua, and empowerment of traditional artisans of Jharkhand. We welcome you, Virendra, and we appreciate your effort in raising this particular organization for the help of local artisans. And then please welcome uh, Ms. Alka Singh. She is marketing head at Avika Online, and she mainly deals with rural segment here and has experience of more than eight years. She is also associated with uh, Ranchi University as a visiting professor, and she is also pursuing PhD at Ranchi University. So you also belong to our fraternity, Alka. So we welcome you here. And uh, I also welcome all the participants. I would request uh, Professor Ansuman Hazarika, once Professor Salem Singh, our Honorable Director, sir. So please welcome our uh, Honorable Director, sir, Professor Salem Singh also. He has been very instrumental in uh, uh, getting some, you know, getting something back to the society through this center. And this center has an objective in that way only to help the local artisans, to help the local entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs here. I would request Professor Hajarika once uh, the uh, director sir, addresses uh, the, the speakers as well as the participants to kindly take over and moderate this session. Thank you, uh, uh, Professor Sir. Uh, uh, director, sir. Okay. So, most uh, thank you, Aditya and most welcome, Brain Kumar for sparing the time and motivate uh, budding social entrepreneurs. Let me just give brief introduction to the center. Center has been established in the name of scouring statesman Sri Atal Bihari Vajpayee in 2018. We have been uh, trying to get people from various walks of life who are associated with leadership, policy, and governance issues. The center aspires to become think tank in the area of policy, leadership, and governance, and has uh, established itself as a uh, center which is uh, disseminating and producing knowledge in these areas. And ultimately, we try to start 
a course in policy management, which will be a two-year BGP course uh, in years to come. Currently, our uh, activities have been uh, researching on various topics related to leadership policy and governance. We have undertaken uh, few researches on water policy and uh, business development, education policy, and uh, other uh, subjects uh, in policy domain. Uh, and we have been in, working with the topmost leaders and policy makers. Our institution, institution the center was uh, inaugurated by VK Singh, that time Minister of External Affairs, and uh, Honorable Vice President of India, Sri Lankaya Naidu ji, has uh, delivered address, uh, annual address, and many more uh, professionals have been associated. We conducted very successful summer course uh, for uh, young leaders and policy makers, uh, numbering some 87. And we have been conducting multiple seminars, conferences, and nowadays in the age of pandemic, we have been using a lot of webinars, including leadership, including leadership in crisis, education policy, women entrepreneurs, and today, we are fortunate to have two mentor speakers uh, who will be sharing the stories of their organization, uh, how to benefit people in Jharkhand uh, so that more and more people are invited in the domain of social entrepreneurship. So we again, uh, on behalf of uh, and Rachi and the Center for Leadership Policy and Governance. Welcome the two speakers, Ren Kumarji and Alkali. I'm looking forward to hear you, hear from you, the action um, that youth can take to make Yahakhan uh, more vibrant and uh, to make uh, people more involved with social entrepreneurship. Over to Hayal Kaji. Thank you, Director, sir, uh, for your kind words and for introducing I am Ranchi and the center to the audience. Uh, I now like to uh, start the event with a brief, brief speech by Mr. Virendra Kumar would be telling us about his venture Mati Ghar and how it is working to change the lives of uh, traditional artists in Jharkhand. Over to you, Mr. Kumar. Okay. Uh, good evening, respected professors, panelists, and all the participants. Thank you so much for inviting me and giving me this opportunity so that I can speak about my organization, Matigar, which in turn might help some of your participants to discover their uh, passions and in social entrepreneurship. Uh, it might clear their doubts about the challenges, opportunities, and most importantly, the need of social entrepreneurship in uh, the current time. The current time is uh, more important to uh, venture into the social entrepreneurship thing because we are now uh, uh, very vocal about the local, right? Mr. Modi has said, our Honorable Prime Minister has said to go vocal for the local and give uh, a good platform for the local goods, right? So in this regard, I'll, I will tell the story of Matigar that how I why I started this. So I'll divide this into 
three categories the three segments okay so first will be why i started second thing is uh, how the scenario can be changed and the th third thing is what am i doing to change the scenario right so why did i started uh, did i start the martiger okay i was a business analyst right so martiger was started after i left my job it i it wasn't like uh, that i left my job to start martiger actually i left my job because i wasn't feeling satisfied with it i did i was the student president of entrepreneurship development cell in my college so i always had this thing uh, in my mind that i have to venture into social entrepreneurship but when will i do it and how it would happen i wasn't very sure about it so <clears throat> when i felt very dissatisfied with my job i immediately left it and came by to, back to my hometown which is jamshedpur and here i got to know about the various art forms of jharkhand so i started researching about it and got to know about the different art forms of jharkhand and then i went on research i went to different areas like hazaribagh dumka and amadubi which is in east singbum to know about all these art forms and got to know that a uh, very thing that is common in all these art form is that the artisans are not able to survive the artisans are leaving their traditional job and venturing into something else like they are selling bangles or they are selling toys or they are uh, working as a laborer so that very uh, that intrigued me and i was uh, touched to the core of my heart that i should be doing something for them and i saw that there is an opportunity also because the art forms of jharkhand are not very popular like the art forms of other states when we talk about madhubani everybody knows it when we talk about warli painting or we talk about gond painting everybody knows their name but when we talk about sohrai or when we talk about khobar pathkar or jadupatiya very few people know about it why is it so because these were not highlighted these were not given the platform which uh, they need so even this uh, painting sohrai painting which has started getting popular right now uh, since last 2 3 years was uh, made popular by this uh, state government just because the uh, because uh, af just after uh, prime minister modi came to hazaribagh to inaugurate the newly built railway station so he saw all these art forms being done on the railway platforms so he appreciated it so then a state government took action that we need to promote this art form so sohrai got promoted and now a lot more people know about sohrai but when we talk about pathkar very few people know about it jadupatiya same is the condition so these art forms have the potential to be flag bearers of jharkhand but they were not given the opportunity they were not given the right platform artisans were um, getting demotivated and they were lose, uh, leaving their traditional job so i thought that being from this state and background of sorai uh, painting family so i thought that i should be helping them if i want then who will else so then i started researching about it and in 2017 i registered mati garaza organization so that i can help the cause so that was the start that was the why part why i started okay the second part is how the scenario can be changed so the scenario can be changed through uh, when we need uh, when we promote these paintings first of all people need to be told about these paintings the story behind these paintings who all does these paintings and what uh, what are their uh, 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 what are their uniqueness so that needs to be told to the people that needs to be promoted art artisans need to be trained there are lot many artisans in um, uh, different villages but they are not very trained 
so they are not able to do the painting so that it can be sold in the market okay so they need a good amount of training so that uh, um, better products even if we talk about just painting then better paintings could be created then they should have a platform to sell their paintings whether it could be a platform provided by the government or it could be a, pri a private platform but they need to have a platform through which they are able to sell their paintings nationally internationally those are the things and in these things these things cannot be done by a single person because when we we are talking about the entire state we have four different art forms which are in different locations not even in one location Sohrai painting comes from, uh, Sohrai and Khobar painting comes from Hazari Bagh district. Vaidkar painting comes from East Singhum district. And the Jadupatiya painting comes from Dumka districts. So those three different paintings are in uh, different locations. So it's uh, very, uh, it will be very difficult for a single person to totally help the cause. So government need to help in, in it and not just government private institutions like IAMS, Excel Rise and design institutions like ID and NIFT they all need to come together to give tra uh, training to the artists in this and how these art forms could be put on different products right so that it could be promoted because not, not everyone likes to buy paintings. There are very few people, like painting has a very niche market. So there are very few people who are very interested in uh, the original art forms. Most of the most of people are interested in buying something for them which would look uh, which would look in that case, uh, the role of NID and NIFT becomes very important. And for promotion, for giving various outlets, and for exports, the role of government becomes very important. And NGOs like us and others can help mobilize these resources, get in touch directly with these artisans uh, at the grassroots level, know their problem, sit with them, talk with them, and uh, help improve their lives. So everybody need uh, to come together to help this cause. Madhubani painting didn't become Madhubani painting in just two years or three years or five years, not even a decade, right? It took a long time. It was discovered during the British era, right? So it will take time, but people need to come together. Different organizations need to come together to help this cause. Now coming up to the third part, what we are doing uh, to help this cause. So, first thing is that promotion. So, we are promoting these art forms, we are promoting the lives of the artisans uh, through uh, different platforms like Instagram, Facebook, through website. We are also um, putting some exhibitions, like we put an exhibition in College of Arts and Crafts, Patna University, we put an exhibition in Delhi. We were going to put an exhibition in Jamshedpur also during Swadeshi Mela, but then COVID happened and it didn't uh, happen, and the exhibition didn't happen. So through exhibitions and through online marketing, through social media marketing, we are trying to reach people so that they can know about these art forms. So once they know about these art forms, then we can put on the put on different products uh, so that might interest them then training of the artisans so artisans need to be trained to create better products if they are creating paintings so they need to be trained so that they can create better paintings so once they are able to create better paintings they can be brought to different products like the, those paintings could be done on different utility products like coasters or it, 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 these are like very much done in sarees and um, stoles dupattas and a lot more things right so they need to be trained so that they can create beautiful products which would suit 
or urban audience then they need to be given the platform right so we created a website to give a platform to them right through which they can sell their product directly so doing this uh, our website um, because the uh, the whole scenario of the market has changed so we are re -strat -strat strategizing so we are providing the online platform through which they can directly sell their painting nationally and internationally they can export also right so and we are uh, training um, uh, new students uh, means we are training kids in these art forms so that this these art forms could be transferred to the coming generation right because passing these art forms to the newer generation is very important because the traditional artisans are not very keen in teaching these art forms to their children and grandchildren because they see don't see scope so before we convince them that they should be teaching these art forms to uh, their children and grandchildren parallelly we are teaching these art forms to students of different of schools so as a, as as hobby classes they are learning pathka painting they are learning sohrai painting jagupatiya paintings and in the traditional style they are not using acrylic colors they are not using chemical colors they are using the traditional natural colors they are rubbing stones they are uh, taking out colors through flowers they are taking out color through leaves and they are painting so uh, we are teaching them in the natural way so that the originality doesn't get lost okay and then we are also using these art forms to empower tribal women who are not traditional artisans but they need some work for their survival them in form so that they can earn their livelihood through through these art forms they could paint it on wooden products they could paint it on masks and they could paint it on uh, like cushion covers and in and we market those products so that it would bring some income to those tribal women artisans so we are using these uh, so that is what we are doing so that was the what part okay so i discussed all these uh, three parts like why how and what so that is what we are doing so uh, mr kumar we have almost almost uh, run out of time for uh, your your presentation but we'll get back to we with you with questions in the meantime we would now like to know uh, from madam alka more about avika online and how it is helping uh, mm -hmm. rural entrepreneurs and women entrepreneurs from jharkhand okay am i audible yes you're audible please a very warm good evening to all uh, I am Alka Singh, going to present Avika on behalf of Malvika Sharma. Uh, before me, she was going to take the session, but due to some reason, she is not here, so I am taking the session. So Avika, before, uh, as the today's theme is local for vocal, so before going to that topic, I would like to discuss a little bit about the Avika, the history, or we can say the profile of Avika, how it get started. So Avika mainly started by the two women, who just want to convert their personal relationship into the professional life and it is a venture started by the mother and daughter together so it is started by Ms. Anita Sharma and Ms. Malavika Sharma together now basically when they started this venture the beginning in the very beginning their focus was bringing economic empowerment to the women at home again i am repeating when they started this venture they started with the thought that it will bring economic empowerment to women at home so with the in the very starting this with the six women and within the tenure of three months they have to, uh, 310 women with them right now we have completed our 10 years and right now we are working with 3000 artisan or we can say the ruler artisan so uh, these ruler artisan are basically working at home so 
uh, this is very difficult for us to have the 3000 women every time available so they take a break when they are working at home or they are working for their home so uh, if you will see the current ratio or current uh, data so every time we have approx 900 to 1000 women who are available with the avica to work so this is a little bit history about the avica now i would like to um, discuss about the challenges which we are facing or i can say our rural artisan who are facing with their products I will not discuss anything new which we all are not aware, but would like to still would like to highlight those points which are very becoming a very big issue for us to survive. The first point I would like to say is the quality and the look of the product cannot compete with the shining plastic product. So as we are the ruler artisan, we cannot compete with the product who are made up of the plastic or they are very shining. And in a very local language, if I will say, jo dikta hai, wo bikta hai. Hamare product mein kahin na kahin wo thoda lacking ho jata hai because it is a local artisan work. The second point is what the cost is high. The, in comparison to the plastic product or other product, the cost of our product is high because it is made by the hand so every artisan is giving their time their effort in that and another thing the cost of the product is high because it is not scalable the ruler women or i can say the ruler artisan don't have that much fun that they can scale up their product or we can say they cannot hold the material they don't have power of holding the raw material so they are buying few raw, raw materials and then making that product and then they are selling. So it is going to, however, it is going to increase the price of the product. The third point I would like to highlight is that each product is made by individual. So there is a problem of identical product. So if someone asked us that we want same product so there is little bit difference in that the replication of the product is not possible because we are making or the artisan are doing hand or making hand goods so the replication is not same because if we have some machines or some kind of uh, techniques or te uh, technology then we can replicate it easily but as i told you the ruler artisan are making making the product by using their hand the replication of good is little bit difficult for us the fourth challenges which we are facing is online presence of selling is negligible because they are very they are lacking in net saving we know that uh, yeah, net is available everywhere. The ruler segment are people are also using the net, but they are not that much friendly that they can click the of the product and they can go online and they can do their selling. So this is also one of the biggest challenge right now the ruler artisan are facing. The next point is also very important is online banking. The Modi ji has said go cashless or we want to bring or we want to make India a cashless India. So for ruler segment mainly, online banking is little bit problem. They don't have that much understanding, they don't have that much education that they can do online banking. Even our, most of the educated people face problem in doing the online banking. So this is also one of the problem that going online is a big challenge for the ruler people the next point is most artisan don't even have registered bank account the same point the next one is online platform like amazon need legal registration and they need gst etc etc things so for the local artisan for the ruler artisan to go on for the online selling they have to deal with some kind of legal formalities like gst is one thing so this gst is again going to add unnecessary cost to their product or we can say it is a burden or it can be uh, um, exceeding their price of the product the next point i would like to highlight is marketing and branding budget is zero for the ruler artisan 
they give a lot of effort to their product they the uh, time the devotion they gave i don't think that any people on this earth give to their work but they are lacking with what they are lacking with the marketing and the branding of product because they don't keep fund for the branding and the marketing of the product and the reason behind that they don't keep don't allocate fund for the branding and for the marketing of the product because already they are lacking with the financial support again the next point i would like to highlight is bank gives mini loans to the rural artisan that's definitely not enough for sustainable there are so many schemes uh, given by our state government uh, by our uh, central government but are they are visible or are they are practical in the real life i will give a small example like a scheme like mudra loan it is very difficult to execute that mudra loan basically or mainly in the east india side if the people want the mudra loan they have to go through the several processes and things so they just quit out they don't go for that facility so these are the problem which the rural artisan are facing and so i can say or i can conclude that when we attack all these points and solve each steps only then vocal for local can happen and it is not possible till the time more hands i mean to say people like me and you will join our hands with the rural artisan to help them to bring out them from the challenges and the problem they are facing thank you thanks a lot uh thank you ms alka uh, uh would like to request our director sir and to ask if he has any comments on what the speakers has presented till now uh, both speakers have lot of enthusiasm for their work um, i say about vivendra uh, ji uh, he has uh, taken Uh, how to spread the three kinds of local painting and try to help all kinds of uh, problem that rural artisans are facing and he tries to be uh, entrepreneur uh, mentor. uh pen philosopher and guide people who are looking for solutions who are looking for issues uh, to be solved and um, he is trying the modern methods uh, of networking going to social media going to facebook instagram and other places to market the product and also giving training to people who otherwise are avoiding these traditional art farms and also giving training to people in the school so that they don't forget their tradition so truly living uh, what has been told by our honorable prime minister uh, modi ji be vocal for local so he is a uh, vocal as well as activist uh, by uh, taking uh, the art farms forward uh, in the youngsters uh, especially children in the school alka ji has uh, given a counter point of view that uh, we are facing such a, a monumental problem uh, like uh, 
the Google artisans are working through their hand. They are not working through implements. So it is not scalable. Then they are available only part time, not full time. And the online presence is not there, and there is a lot of problem with the banking getting loan. And they, the Google woman and Google artisans can't sustain uh, for a long time, so they are sourcing the raw material, repairing things, and selling. And then again, whatever comes, they are purchasing you know, raw materials, repairing that and selling. See, made the, the emphasis that as far as human resources are concerned, am I audible? Uh, as far as human resources are concerned, uh, no power on makes that much effort as uh, these Google artisans are doing. But uh, still the outcome uh, or the return they are getting is not uh, that handsome because the cost is uh, high. Plus it is not as much fancy as the plastic products with signs and other things because of that uh, again uh, the visibility of the product is not that much, so we can talk about sustainability and we can also have some kind of network of these artisans and some kind of facilitator, bank facilitator who will do many things for them as a part of network, uh, uh, as a part of uh, networked employee, uh, volunteer, uh, and here again I will say people like Virendraji uh, can help them uh, to make uh, things better so that we have the bridge between tradition and the modernity. Uh, the banking uh, skills can be taught, but uh, if uh, they spend more time in banking and less time in working, then perhaps things will not uh, be doing. So, a specialist person in, in the network maybe who can help them with banking, but the rest of the things can be taken uh, care of. So, one side is saying that uh, we are doing it, we are helping it. Another saying, uh, side is saying that it will happen only if the impediments uh, that are there uh, should be removed. So, uh, nobody else will remove the impediments. We ourselves have to stand and unite, uh, join hands to remove those impediments and march ahead uh, in the line what is called vocal for local. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your very encouraging words. Uh, we would we'll have a brief question answer session for the participants. Uh, in the meantime, I would like to request the audience if they have any questions they can please put it up on the chat box and we can ask it to the participants but i would like you to in the meantime i'd like to start with mr kumar and ask him about how how has he tried to ensure that the the the, uh, the work which is done by the artist is sustainable so he has a highlight you have highlighted a lot of issues that they are not being made uh, they're not being made as 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 products which can be used by end users rather they are being made as uh, paintings as such so how how do you plan to take it forward from here to make it a commercially viable enterprise have you entered into any tie-ups or are you uh, working with anything like uh, 
avika online uh, which which would bring these products to the market and make it a commercially viable enterprise uh, you will have to unmute yourself mr kumar okay so uh, we have started uh, okay we have trained we through some artisans who are like trained and who are able to do these paintings well on products we have started making different products which uh, and marketing them like we have tried these paintings on wooden products like wooden coasters trays pen stands and office stationeries then for home furnishings we have uh, put these paintings on cushion covers tote bags we even have made some uh, these paintings on stoles and these things so through those artisans who are trained and who are able to put it on products very well we have started already started doing these things and we are marketing these products using our uh, facebook instagram and website so we have already started this process and in turn we are training more artisans that they are also able to put these art forms uh, on different kind of products thank you mr kumar we already have a question for you but uh, we'll go back to that with a, we just take a question for miss alka and abhika online they'll go back to you so uh, miss alka there is the, uh, you have highlighted a lot of issues which uh, you say that rural entrepreneurs face or women in rural areas face in delivering the products to the to the people to the end users so how is your organization trying to deal with this how are you tackling this problems since you are you are the intermediary channel how do you deal with these issues we are basically uh, dealing in the way like we have our own marketing team okay so we are engaging the youth like the volunteers from the colleges who can go to the rural artisans and who will teach them how to use the uh, social media to sell their product and we have a chain of volunteers like in every rural uh, with every rural artisan we are trying to just uh, connect one volunteer so they can help them and we are providing certificates to them and another module we have like the people we have a marketing team in which the people are going and bringing the product from the rural artisan and we uh, have our own photographer professional photo photographer and we are then clicking it and we have we are online so we are just put those product we have started another uh, social media platform that is thoda sa india and now we are bringing different kind of product which are made by the rural artisan and we are just putting those product only on that thoda thoda sa india because the theme is vocal for local so thoda sa india we have started and just we are giving another platform to the to the rural artisan to sell their product uh thank you miss alka uh, we go back to uh, mr kumar we have a question from uh, miss prasi chitlangi as she asks what what advice would you give to college graduates who want to become social entrepreneurs uh to all the college graduates who want to uh, become um, social entrepreneurs i would like to recommend them that uh if you are looking out to this field then you Uh, need to be very careful that you need to balance the social aspect and entrepreneurship aspect many of the time it happens that we focus totally on the social on the social side that this is the mission and this is the vision and we are totally devoted to it and we forget the uh, entrepreneurship part so the business side needs to be well aligned with the social side nobody is going to buy your product just because it was made by a some rural artist for once or let's say buy it for second time also but not more than that if they don't find it good enough for them if they if the product doesn't solve their purpose it doesn't fit fit in into their requirements they won't buy it so the social aspect and the entrepreneurship aspect needs to be balanced very well and that will take time and that will take research that would take determination and if uh, never be like many of the uh, like many people enter into it 
to for like to for money right so money will come right but if you are only after money that i have to you know, first earn money then i'll see about the social uh, change then first you go do something else earn money then you come back because it will take time to earn money it, it's a slow process social entrepreneurship is not a very fast process it will take time it will take your determination it will take your courage perseverance everything but it will be rewarding it will be satisfactory for you so balance these two aspects very well thank you mr kumar uh, i just wanted to ask miss alka at the moment uh, so you have highlighted the problem of uh, cost uh, of the products as compared to the expenses which are incurred in actually producing the products and that artisans have very low budgets and they cannot buy the raw materials so how are you trying to how are you trying to help them uh, get over that hurdle because uh, because it's a, it's a, otherwise it will be a vicious cycle which will continue how you as an organization avika online helping your artisans who are working to get over this hurdle i cannot say that we are supporting uh, all artisan because we are also in fund or in crunch of fund so we don't also have so much fund to help them but what we have structured right now is we are just making a clusters okay and we are trying to uh, just put some uh, raw material of our own so it will give a kind of mental support to them and when they think that there is something in stock so they also take initiation that okay didi this time i will also involve invest my earning for the raw material so this is one of the initiation taken by us that we are giving a stock to them to motivate that you should also invest your earning in the stock then the cycle will be continue and then and then only it will go for the long term thank you ms alka uh, so uh, mr kumar going back to you i think this is going to be the final question of the day we have a very relevant question from our professor sai vijay who who asks if 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 the local state government uh, is providing any help to social entrepreneurs or do you know uh, of any such schemes which which the local state government has taken oh, okay so from the uh, local government side as far as for my field i'll talk about specifically about my field okay uh, there is very lack of support from the state government side like earlier jharkhand was doing very good but now jharkhand is not very uh, uh, like uh, supporting like it's in the marketing is also uh, not very good right now even khadi is doing better than that okay so for marketing the, the products made by different artisans or like they need, it needs to be a better platform so that those products can sell well and as far as those uh, the state government supporting the entrepreneurs uh, this atal bihari vajpayee innovation lab started right uh, so uh, i also participated in their process i felt to that um, lots can be improved in the selection of uh, entrepreneurs for these projects and uh, we, when we talk about the art and culture so uh, like it has been 20 years since jharkhand se separated from bihar but uh, we don't find you know, we don't even have one single art college in our state so that's a very shocking thing so that says how uh, about the art and culture thing right so a lot needs to be done from government ends to support these artisans it won't be uh, like just conducting some events in the entire calendar year where artisans are called and they are given some work for doing the painting and they are paid and they are sent back it needs to be a continuous process in which the ngos the social entrepreneurs they need to be um, contacted regularly then need to form something a uh, very uh, concrete that goes on around the year 
Okay, Mr. Kumar. Yes, that that is indeed a relevant factor, and you know, highlighted the government schemes, including Khadi, which are taking it forward. So that's a very good venture. Uh, final question. I I wanted to end on end on a positive note, and on the fact that uh, we have social entrepreneurs, budding social entrepreneurs, who will be watching the video. So uh, we have a question from Miss Rani Lakshmi, who have asked, and I think. Uh, Ms. Alka, you would be the final person who would be taking this question. So she asked, what tricks have you discovered to keep you focused and productive in your busy, busy schedule as a social entrepreneur? Can you please repeat your question? Uh, yes, it's uh, what tricks have you discovered to keep yourself focused and productive in your day-to-day -day busy schedule as a social entrepreneur? Okay, so the very first thing I just want to say is that patience is required. Okay, so for being in this social entrepreneur or in rural artisan, patience required because the income is not going to come very uh, in a very first step or in, uh, in a very starting stage. So we need focus and the trick we, uh, we are following is like we need to motivate or keep motivating ourselves continuously because we also know that there are so many, so many problems in with the ruler artisan but we cannot go and tell them that these are the short of or these are the problems you are facing so when we are with them the tricks we use that we use to motivate them one thing and another thing we use to tell them that uh, this is a very untouched area okay and this is a thing which is going to survive for uh, in any situation either the economic is going up or down the artisans are one person who can continue with their work thank you uh, thank you miss alka thank you mr kumar and thank you respected director sir i would now like to hand it over to professor aditya kumar mishra and he will be finishing off the event for the day thank you professor azarika uh, honorable speakers, Mr. Virendra Kumar, Ms. Alka, Honorable Director Sir, Professor Simon Singh, my colleague, Professor Hajarika, I thank you uh, for taking time and participating in this webinar. But uh, before finishing this particular webinar, I would like to say something, especially when the words marketing and branding have been used, have been mentioned multiple times in this webinar. I being professor in branding and marketing, I could not resist myself uh, to saying something. See, the theme of this webinar was vocal for local. That itself tells us what we need to do. Vocal means to speak out, right? So nobody is saying that we need to have you know, a good amount of money for marketing. Nowadays, we have the technologies like social media. So in today's times, conversation is better than conversions. If we go for conversation, conversion will automatically happen. So we need to do something for which, you know, uh, people, the audience, the target audience gets aware about the product, about the important features. And remember one thing, my friends, in today's times, the advantage is Swadeshi, right? nationalism these things are on search across globe so this is see uh, this is the first time when i have seen bhagat singh rajguru and sukhdev in one products ad i will not name the particular brand but why can't we do something like that in our advertisements or in our promotions on social media social media is either at low cost or no cost right so we can use that platform for our help. Secondly, uh, I salute you people for your efforts because it is very rare to see such kind of endeavors, such kind of efforts from young people like you, like you two. Right. Virendra, you are too junior to us, but still I salute you. Uh, the way you have you know, handled it, the way you have you know, left your high paying job and came back to your own state, Jharkhand, and especially Jamshedpur, and started working for the RTCs. And for you too, I can just say one thing, you know, So please, you know, we all are there with you. And 
we will not end up here right this was not just a webinar to know about you this was just to have information about the challenges you people are facing now we will sit among ourselves here and we'll try to come up with something through which we can help the artisans we can help you people we can collaborate for future so with that note i again thank you people for coming for taking time out of your busy schedule and let us know and you have you have apprised us about what is happening at social in, uh, entrepreneurship field and i also thank uh, directors for consistent encouragement and consistent support to this center because of him only the center is at this position where we are uh, you know spreading our wing across different domain and i also thank professor hazarika who has been very helpful in moderating uh, this seminar and such kind of other seminars i also thank uh, my center staff prachi and last at the last but not the least i thank the it department for conducting such a flawless webinar thank you friends thanks once again thank you Thank you. Thank you. All the best.